Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, thank you very much for inviting us uh, to this wonderful conference, uh, to this country, and to, and to this beautiful venue. Uh, I think I've been to many conferences. I've never been to one uh, as pleasant as this. Um, my name is Vernon Rappi. I'm the Director of Cultural Heritage Protection and Security at the Victoria and Albert Museum in London. Uh, my colleague here, Laura Jones, will introduce herself in a minute. We're going to share this presentation. We're going to try and do uh, a bit of a duet. Um, so, uh, very quickly, uh, the V&A in London, for those of you who don't know it, is a large Victorian uh, building, uh, 1853, uh, 1857 it was built, with about 2.9 million objects, about 7.5 linear miles of public space in our main building. Um, what else have we got? Oh, we get about 4 million visitors a year uh, to the building. Um, we're a global organisation, which is why we're interested in, in cultural heritage. We're not just a London-based museum. Uh, we've just completed museums in Shenzhen in China. Uh, we've uh, completed a museum in Dundee up in Scotland. Uh, we're building two museums uh, in the east end of London. We also own the Museum of Childhood, uh, together with about four or five other sites uh, within the UK. So we have global ambitions. Our ambition is to show our collection, which is world heritage from around the globe, to as many people around the world uh, as possible. One of the reasons we opened in Shenzhen in China was that if you open a new museum in London, seven or eight million people are within an hour's journey. If you open a museum in Shenzhen in China, 55 million people can get there within an hour. So you're exposing your collection uh, to far more people. So on to the, um, the, the topic really why we're here today, our Culture in Crisis program was born really five years ago. It was very much the, uh, the idea of a past director, a gentleman called Martin Rolt. Um, he wanted us to be on the global stage. We're a global museum with global collections and he wanted us to do something. He particularly saw, I think, when we saw disasters happening in Iraq and Syria and heritage being uh, destroyed, that he felt that we needed to do something more. We needed to advocate uh, and be a part of um, the global discussion on how we could do this. And so we formed a program which we call Culture in Crisis, uh, partnered first of all with Yale University uh, and then with a series of other organisations and the idea really was to bring people together from different disciplines uh, to work together, to share experiences um, and, and to learn from each other so that we could protect uh, heritage in all of its forms, tangible and intangible, uh, around the world. Um, yeah, this is the entire Culture in Crisis team, so you've been the entire team standing here. Uh, we have a large organisation, and I have to say, when you come from an organisation like the V&A, we have over a thousand people there. Um, there may only be two of us working on this full time, but there are people from so many other departments that are engaged with this project. It's something that's a, a become a real passion within the, within the museum. Um, and we have to collaborate, of course, uh, that's the whole focus of our project. Uh, and we've just put a few of our um, organisations up there that are some of our key partners. We've worked very closely with the British military recently in, the, in constructing the new monuments, uh, men and women section. Uh, we work with the police to, to and Interpol to deal with illicit trafficking of cultural goods. Uh, and then we work with a whole plethora of other people in uh, post-conflict reconstruction uh, and, and what we could like to call the sort of One Health approach to, to, to reconstruction. Um, working uh, across the globe and, and Laura will tell us a little bit more about that uh, right now with our um, public programme that we show. Uh, hello everyone, uh, just to introduce myself, I'm Laura Jones, I'm the Cultural Heritage Preservation Lead at the V&A and as Ben has discussed we work very closely together on the Culture in Crisis programme. So far we've heard a little bit about what goes on behind the scenes but just to give you an idea of how this sometimes manifests at the museum, I'm going to talk a little bit about the public programming. Um, this exists in three major strands, our international conference which takes place annually at a touring destination around the globe, the Culture in Crisis series which is monthly lectures, discussions, panel, uh, debates even, um, around important topics of heritage preservation. And finally our digital strategy which is the audio series and second series due to come out I'll tell you about soon. Um, Brilliant. Starting with the international conferences, uh, we've been running these since the very inception of Culture in Crisis and what they were really an opportunity to do was to bring a very broad group of people together, often from very dif different disciplines, working 
in very disparate parts of the world together to discuss one overarching question within heritage preservation, so we kept it rather broad. Um, as you can see here, we started in London, since then we've been to the States to work with our existing culture and crisis partner, Yale's uh, Centre for the Protection of Cultural Heritage. Uh, then we took it further afield to Rwanda in 2016, um, and this was really the point where we started discussing the One Health approach, where we looked at the synergies between wildlife conservation, environmental conservation and sustainability, and how that relates to our work within cultural management and heritage preservation. We took a quick pit stop back in the UK, and then last year we were in South Africa, uh, in Pretoria, to discuss a kind of development of the One Health approach, and really working with everyone from anthropologists all the way through to zoologists, and looking at how we can learn from each other. Um, Oh, and this is next year, so we're taking a step forward again, so the bigger question that we're dealing with it, and anyone who's even touched the word colonial in the last few years within their discipline knows that this is a hugely sprawling question which we're not going to be able to solve in the two days that we have, but certainly think it's important to be working to discuss this in open frameworks with international colleagues. Um, for this uh, conference we're partnering with Singapore Management University, so for the architects in the room, a very lovely building, uh, uh, and also taking along with us the International National Trust Organisation, who are fantastic partners and can draw, much like Intbao, chapters from across the globe, uh, who all set up their own international, uh, well, national networks um, for the National Trust. Um, what I'll also talk about here is the Culture in Crisis series, and this is located in South Kensington. Um, one of our ambitions really in the next few years is to take this more uh, touring around the UK and more, um, because they're monthly events, what they t are able enabling us to deal with are much more kind of um, direct questions around heritage management. So we can take case studies from around the world and bring them for a sort of hour and a half session to discuss, highlight work, create a bit of advocacy around. And also importantly, what we have for all of these events is at least half an hour at the end for questions with the audience, for people to meet each other at the end, to cre create a sort of space, something which I have to say this conference has done so very well, is allowed those side discussions to take place so that we can meet each other and explore our own ways of collaborating. Um, to give you a kind of just a quick run through, we also deal quite a lot with the built environment in our programming. So um, I think you can see here on the far right, we've got the World Monuments Fund came in to talk about their fantastic stone masonry program. In the middle we're talking about um, the destruction of cultural heritage in conflict and how we create evidence around that and specifically the work of architects and the destruction of buildings is something that is emerging as a trend with organisations like forensic architecture using an almost architectural approach to criticising the destruction of heritage. And on the far left as well, looking at bigger questions to do with sustainability in practices around those themes. Um, and finally we have the audio series which we're not allowed to call a podcast because you can't download it uh, so we've decided to make it much simpler in the next series we're launching next year you can download and will be a podcast um, but essentially are the same thing um, the first series gave us another opportunity to bring some of these themes to a, uh, a more connected audience so you don't have to be able to come to South Kent to listen to a lecture you can actually down well, can't download them uh, you can listen to them stream them uh, through your mobile devices or, t or your uh, computer and again, this was fantastic because we find that we meet lots of really inspiring individuals doing really wonderful work and passing through the UK or they kind of meet up with us when we're on one of our trips. So to sit them down for an hour in a room, often posing them against another professional working in that sphere and ask them to ask each other questions and talk about their disciplines and how they work together. Um, please do go and take a listen because they are so broad in their interest areas. I'm sure each one of you will be able to find something that interests you. Um, and now I'm going to hand back over to Vernon to tell you something that's taken up quite a lot of our time for the last year or so. So I'll be, I'll be very quick with this, um, but whilst we've been uh, running the programme, we've really been finding well, what, is the, what is the purpose of us, what, what does the VNA contribute to this, um, what tangible benefit, and um, the one thing we found really is that we're, we're networkers, we're bringing people together, we're not necessarily seeing the results, and so the next stage of this is something that develops on that in a digital way. Uh, we found that there's a lot of good work going on around the world by all sorts of different groups of people, but actually it's not particularly well connected. Not, not everybody knows what everyone else is doing. Not everyone can focus funding efforts in a particular area. 
Um, so we, we've looked at developing and in fact now have developed it. We launched on the 2nd of December, so you're not allowed to tell anybody yet. Uh, you're getting a, an early view. Um, a, a global um, global heritage preservation portal and this will be now this is not going to work I don't think no. we, we have a video you can go online and you can watch the video um, but in the same time we'll, we'll speed, uh, speed over this um, we will have accessible to everyone free of charge every heritage project that's taking place throughout the world uh, you'll be able to search on a whole plethora of easy key search words uh, so you can search on architectural projects or you can search on something geographical or you can search on, search on the type of preservation or conservation that, that's taking place uh, and it will take you into to the uh, a page which will give you more information but in keeping with the rest of our belief that we're there as networkers what it'll actually do which is not common with most websites most webs my time is up most websites uh, try and keep you on this one tries to throw you off to make a connection uh, to somebody else so um, you're just seeing some screenshots from it here and I'm not going to take any more you can find it at www cultureincrisis.org um, and you can go on and look at it yourself it's there live now and the public launch will be in London on the 2nd of December. Do you want to do some, some I won't say anything more about the future strategies but essentially more, lots more and more dis uh, interdisciplinary collaboration and to make new friends as we are here today. Thank you.